So this happens far too often in our kitchens at EIT, especially with new knives and new students. This video is going to show you some basic techniques to avoid this from happening. Hey guys, we tend to have a lot of cuts here at EIT, especially with new trainee students. Um, so I'm just going to run over a few basic safety precautions that you can take to avoid cuts. Okay, one of the first things is when you set up your board, is to make sure you have a non-slip mat underneath. Board on top. Make sure it's sort of, you know, balanced well, so it doesn't move or slide around. And knife kits. A lot of people cut themselves taking the knives in and out of their kits. So one, one little bit of advice is to have all your sharp edges facing one way. Um, make sure you strap them in well. And when you open it, just be careful that there's no loose knives that can fall out. If a knife does happen to fall out, please don't try and catch it. Be very careful taking them out. This is probably where about 30% of our cuts happen, is when students are taking knives in or out of their knife cases. When you're walking around the kitchen, hold the blade down, pointing down towards the ground and the blade facing behind you. When you're putting it on your chopping board, put it down flat. Don't ever leave it line up like that. Sometimes some of these knives balance up like that. Never carry a knife around on your board. Okay, carry them separately. So if you're using another knife on the chopping board, make sure you don't have you know, more than one knife on the board. The knife if you're not using it, you can just go up against the edge of your chopping board so that the blade's not pointing in your direction. Also, never cover your knife with a tea towel or a cloth in case someone else comes along to grab the cloth and the knife goes flying. Holding a knife. You should hold, have three fingers around the handle, a thumb on the blade and your forefinger on the other side. Not down here, you'll lose the end of your finger. But just tucked in like that. Okay. The reason we hold the knife like this, uh, it's easier on the wrist and it's the most stable. If your finger's on top, which a lot of students do, you just don't have enough control over your knife. A little bit of grease on your hands and it will slip. So thumb on the one side of the blade, forefinger tucked up like that. Okay, once we've learned how to hold the knife properly, this hand is basically just doing a continuous circle, up and down, forward and back. Forward, up, back, down, and in a circular motion. And this hand is basically just, you plant your thumb down and you're dragging those fingers back towards your thumb. I tend to put my nails right on top of the chopping board plant the thumb and then just slide it back that way. So when you're learning sometimes it's helpful just to practice both of these independently of each other just to get that right motion. Okay and when you're actually cutting when you put them together you'll notice that this knuckle is forward of the fingernail and that's important because it's this knuckle that's going to guide the knife as you pull those fingers back. So this hand's still just doing that circular motion up and down, and this finger's slowly coming back. I will show you on this piece of celery. Fingers on top, this knuckle forward most, thumbs back here, ready to pull those back and also holding the product down. This hand is just going up and down in that circular motion. Now I'm just going to slowly pull that finger back. This will also guide how thick you want your slice. If I pull the finger back fast, it's going to make a thicker slice. If I pull it back slowly, it's going to make a thinner slice. So when you're wiping food off the edge of the knife, always again have the blade facing away from you and push it down like that. Please be careful, never go straight along or obviously never ever slide it with the blade facing towards you. Okay, so to cut an onion, make sure your knife is sharp. If it's not sharp, watch the knife sharpening video. 
Um, you can get a bit of a gauge on how sharp your knife is just by gently touching the edge. Okay, so this is how I cut up an onion. There's lots of different ways, but what I've found what works for me is I start off by cutting off that root section really close to it. That's where a lot of the dirt and bacteria is, so I get rid of that straight away so it doesn't dirty the chopping board. In most cases I'll hold the onion like this, put the knife on top and cut directly through that root section. Push the knife forward till the tip of the knife hits the chopping board and then down. Okay, to peel it you can then swap to a paring knife if you want to. The quickest way I've found is by cutting down to the skin, peeling the knife back. Creates a bit of a V section where you can then use your thumb and the heel of the knife to go one, two, and that's peeled. Again, okay, so there's lots of ways to cut an onion. I'm just going to give you a quick demo on how I cut an onion brinoise. You can do two or three cuts horizontally. I'm just going to do two. Fingers on top, securing the onion. One, two, turn it sideways. And you can kind of see the lines of the onion coming down here, so I'm going to follow those lines, making sure that you don't cut through the root section. That helps to hold the onion together when you get into the, the Brunoise cut itself. And then just slowly bringing the fingers back Cut down and out. Down and out. Sometimes when I get near the end here, I squeeze the onion together just to support it to do those last couple of cuts. And then the cross cut. Again, making sure your knife's nice and clean. I'm using this finger, or this knuckle in particular, to guide the knife. One common mistake is people forget about their thumbs, and you'll be cutting down like this, and you forget to move your thumb back. So make sure your, your thumb and your other fingers are behind this lead finger. using the knife and then to wash it. One of the key things is to never ever leave it sitting in the bottom of the sink like that. Somebody else might come along and just reach for an item in the sink and cut themselves. I always just hold on to the handle, get a good scrubbing brush, nice hot soapy water, scrub each side and the handle and then place on the side of the sink. You can grab your tea towel Again, blade facing away from you, grab the blade of the knife, pull it away, dry the blade, then the handle, and then you're good to go. Just remember to not walk around the kitchen pointing it or holding it any other way except for down beside you.